this video we want to talk about how to solve a linear equation with fractions. Many people think an equation with fractions are not easy to solve, even they know the method, because there are some common mistakes they always make there. So let's take a look at a specific example, how to solve an equation with fractions. So see that example, and we have a, a equation, a linear equation with fraction. So the most common method we want to solve that kind of equation is to multiply the least common denominator to both sides of the equation to get rid of the denominators. Okay, so let's take a look here for this case the least common denominator actually is 4 times 5, which is 20, which is 20. So we need to multiply 20 to both sides of the equation, So which means every term. Or you can just say, let's take a look at this way. So here, because 20 is the least common denominator, so we multiply 20 to both sides of the equation, 4x, minus x divided by 4 plus x plus 1 divided by 5 equal to 20 times 6x. Okay, so now you distribute to each of the term. So 20 times 4x, and so here you have 80x minus 20 times x divided by 4, we just 20 times x divided by 4 plus 20 times x plus 1 divided by 5 equal to, that's equals 120x. So now, next thing you want to do is to reduce the denominator, to reduce the denominator. Okay, so here 20 and 4, the common factor is 4, so you can reduce 4 from that's two numbers, that's going to be 5. 20 into 5, the common factor is 5, so here reduce 5, this is 4. So now we rewrite this, okay, so we have 80x minus 5 times x plus 4 times, look here, 4 times x plus 1, because, in okay, initially that's in the numerator of this fraction. So you consider the numerator as one group. So now after reduce this, so here only x plus one left. So four times x plus one, you really should put x plus one inside of parentheses because of four times the whole thing, x plus one. So that is a very common mistake of people just four times x plus one without using the parentheses there. Okay, this 120x. So now, 80x minus 5x, which is 75x, plus this one, you need to do the distribution to each of this term. So you have a 4x plus 4 equal to 120x. Okay, so here, now this combined together, which is 79x plus 4 equals 120x. So now, we want to solve for x, so we want to put all the x terms together. So now we subtract 79x from both sides. So you can see here, I will have 120 minus 79, so which is a 41x, and that's 4 left, that's 0. So both sides divide by 41, so here you have x equal to 4 divided by 41. So you solve the equation, the x equals 4 divided by 41. Okay, so another thing here, sometimes people say, I don't want to do all those steps here, I just want to multiply in each term by 20, which is fine. 
but that but that's gonna cause a problem sometimes okay sometimes the people think oh look here the first term integer I don't need a multiply 20 to get rid of the denominator that's why okay no fraction I don't need a multiply 20 by uh, to get rid of a denominator but look here when you multiply a equation okay multiply equation by a number you can't just multiply one term you have to multiply the whole thing that's what we have a whole thing here that's the reason you do that every term you should multiply by 20. okay this is a very common mistake people just think i don't need to multiply 20 to this this term because no fraction that's no fraction no you have to okay otherwise you're going to change the equation if you change the equation definitely the solution is not same as before okay so that's how we solve the equation like this can't and normally when we solve the equation like this can't we also want to check the solution we also want to check the solution so here and so to check the solution you always check the original equation don't check something from a middle there always check the original equation so here let's check the solution check the solution so here let's take a look the left side left side of the equation so you have 4 times 4 over 41 minus 4 over 41 divided by 4 plus 4 divided by 41 plus 1 divided by 5 this is the left side of the equation okay so here you can see there's nothing I can do about that thing here I cannot reduce anything I just go ahead and multiply 16 divided by 41 minus this one actually 4 divided by 41 divided by 4 can be written as 4 divided by 41 multiply it's reciprocal 1 fourth and plus 4 divided by 41 plus 1 so that actually is a 4 divided by 41 plus 41 divided by 41 to the reason you write this because you're gonna get a uh, common denominator at the fractions there okay so add this together you can see that equals 45 divided by 41 so it turns out I have 16 over 41 minus 4 4 reduce so I got numerator is 1 divided by 41 plus that one you can see I got 41 divided by 4 uh, 45 divided by, by 41 multiply 1 fifth divided by 5 multiply by 1 fifth so you can reduce a 5 with 45 that's 9 so now it turns out you're gonna have 16 minus 1 which is 15 and that's 9 over 41 so that's give you 24 over 41 that's how you check there okay so now in on the right side you can see this is 6 times x 6 x is 4 over 41 so you multiply together is 24 divided by 41 so that's two same so you are done okay that's how we solve equation like this kind okay so now what about if you have equation with three fractions and all the denominators are different so how are you going to find the least common denominator okay and to find the least common denominator when the number is small it's pretty easy to guess for example like this case you can say I try to figure out that one and so here uh, you could say oh I can just go ahead and multiply all those together that is not the least common denominator okay and so here what is the least common denominator and so how are we gonna find this easily especially you have a many numbers many denominators okay so here that's how we normally do this way this is one way of course you have many ways but this way I think this is the simplest way to do it I write all these three numbers okay list them so you can see three and nine get 
comment in a factor which is three. So you just put a three here. So now because four is not divisible by three, so you just drop the four. The three divided by three, which is one, one times three is three. Three times three, okay, which is nine. Okay, three times which is nine. So now you can see four, one, three. Now there's no any common factor for these three numbers besides one. Okay, so which means that now you stop. All you need to do is just multiply all those numbers together. That will give you the least common denominator. Okay, so here, 3 times 4, 12. 12 times 1, which is 12, times 3, 36. So the 36 is the least common denominator for this case here. Okay, I can give you another example. For example, if you have 12, 18, and say, uh, 36. Okay, so when I do this here, I, if you cannot see uh, the common factors there, you can definitely tell this every, this number divided by two. So you got a two, so that's two times six is 12. Two times nine is 18. Two times 18 is 36. And but you can see now, when number getting smaller, you can see more there, and you can see every number divided by three. So that's two times three, which is six. Three times three, which is nine. And three times six, which is 18 there. Okay, now, now don't stop here because you can see three and six, you still have a common factor, which is three. You use three, but when you use three, that's two, you cannot do anything. So you just drop the two, and three, and you can one times three, which is three, two times three, and which is six there. So now you have a common factor, which is two. You got a two, okay? So you got one, but that's why you cannot do anything. That's you got to not do anything here. So now you can see all you need to multiply those numbers together give you the least common denominator, okay? So that's also give you that 36. You can see two times three is six. Two times three is six, 36 times one, all 36. But that's just give you a, one, a way to find the least common denominator. Of course, you have some other way to do it. For example, you do so-called so prime factorization, okay? We will not talk about the prime factorization, okay? So now, Let's take a look at this case because 36 is the least common denominator for this case. We just multiply 36 to both sides, okay? So if you want to directly multiply to every term, you can. So here, 36 times 3 fourth y plus 36 times 1 third and y minus 4 and equal to 36 times y plus 1 divided by 9. Okay, you can do this here. Okay, then remember, always reduce with the denominator first. Don't try to multiply to the numerator. Because if you multiply the numerator, you cannot get rid of the denominators. Okay, so go ahead to reduce 4. So let's give you 9. Reduce 3. Let's give you 12. Reduce 9, let's give you 4 there. So I rewrite this here. You can see I have 9 times 3, which is 27y plus 12, and y minus 4, and equals 4 times y plus 1. Always remember, put a parenthesis if initially you don't have there. So now you can see I have 27y plus 12y minus 48 equal to 4y plus 4. I did a distribution term by term. This is another common mistake people easily forget. Okay, same thing here. So now combine this together. So you can see this is a 39y minus 48 equal to 4y plus 4. Okay, subtract 4y from both sides and add 48 to both sides. 
So you can see I have a 35y and equal to, okay, the 48 plus 4, that's 52. So now the solution is y equal to 52 divided by 35. Okay, so here we are done for this part. So we solve it. So obviously you, you also need to uh, check here. So I will not do this check here. So you can do the checking by yourself for this case. So that's the end of this video.